I've always been fascinated with nature. I think it is the highest form of technology. And I've come to see a pattern which is everywhere that you look, and it's even inside of us. It's the thousands of energy dissipating, bifurcating channels that form branches of a tree and its roots and its leaves. It's the thousands of bifurcating channels that form the tributaries of rivers. The thousands of bifurcating channels that form lightning. It's inside of us. It's in our arteries and veins, and it's in our neurons. I call this energy dissipating fractal gnome, and we figured out how to put this on a chip to create an entirely new class of adaptive computing substrate that is going to take the field of computing to an entirely new level. So why do we need a new type of adaptive computing substrate? Well, modern computing is based on this separation of memory and processing and requires that we constantly shuttle information back and forth, back and forth, as we're executing a program. But for the types of problems we're interested in right now, like machine learning, like intelligent computing, or large-scale simulations of nature, we just can't shuttle information back and forth any faster. And it just takes too long and consumes far too much energy. It's just not practical. What we need is an efficient computing substrate that unites memory and processing, removes the von Neumann bottleneck, and allows us to solve these problems efficiently. We've done that. We call it thermodynamic RAM, and it is gonna absolutely open up a new realm of possibility in solving these types of problems. Thermodynamic RAM is just the combination of two things, the AHA circuit and random access memory. When you put these two things together, you end up with this general purpose fabric that allows synapses to interact with each other. The act of accessing thermodynamic RAM is the act of processing, is the act of adaptation or learning. Memory and processing have become one. Thermodynamic RAM is the result of over a decade of persistent research and development. And it turns out, at its core, the building block of thermodynamic RAM is the same building block I see everywhere in nature. And that's pretty cool. What we've done is create what's called the GNOME API, or Application Programming Interface. And what the GNOME API allows us to do is simulate thermodynamic RAM at multiple scales of resolution from very high fidelity, high resolution circuit simulations of adapting memristors, all the way to very efficient digital simulations that allow us to solve practical problems on existing platforms. And we're already doing this. We've solved problems that are important for today in machine learning. For example, feature learning, classification, clustering, combinatorial optimization or pattern recognition, robotic actuation, and universal reconfigurable logic. Which means we have the basis for an entirely new type of computing. While thermodynamic RAM moves towards production, we can get started today building applications. By using the GNOME API's efficient digital emulators, we can deploy competitive solutions on existing platforms. When the chips roll out of the fab, our applications will be able to take advantage of the tremendous power, space, and time efficiencies that thermodynamic RAM has to offer. So this isn't some 10-year technology. This isn't a pipe dream. This is an opportunity, and it's available right now.